Yeah, you know, we've been talking about the social credit system. We don't know a whole lot about it in terms of the corporate impact here. Your extensive research here, it, net net, is this good or bad for business? Well, it's going to be uh, good long term because it makes the Chinese economy and the economic actors more compliant. At the same time, it uh, causes more uncertainties. Uh, uncertainties create more cost and complexity. So we have to see how it works out. Uh, it goes live next year. Right. Um, and so it, it's clear now, I guess, in, if, if you look at the silver lining here, Jörg, it's clear now what companies need to do. In the same way that I have to, I, you know, I, I can't help but think, just as an example, let, let's say company A and B do the same bad thing. It doesn't mean they'll get met at the same punishment. Do we know what happens then if you don't comply? Is that clear? Well, the, yeah. I mean, the report comes out now because actually, I guess, 98% of all economic actors, at least on the foreign side, have no idea what the credit system is all about. Everybody associates it with a uh, personal uh, credit system, meaning you cross the street, uh, you jaywalk, and then you have a penalty. This is very different. This is uh, the second largest economy in the world rearranging the way it regulates. So from going from right. the old way of having one relationship with one authority, be it tax, customs, and environment, all of a sudden, all of this is pooled. Artificial intelligence uh, organizes all of this. And interesting, and nowhere seen else in the world, you get a mark out of this. So it's not just your legal obligations in the market that drives you. It's actually an algorithm-driven uh, mark uh, that then determines how high is your interest rate, how much licenses you get, and so forth. Unprecedented, and hence this report asks the Chinese government to clarify this. Jörg, one area that stood out from your report was the ratings of, of key personnel, and that will be an obligation on foreign companies as well as Chinese companies. Is that going to throw up, it sounds like it will throw up, some serious ethical questions for European corporates in China? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the screening of individuals happens already now, uh, more so, of course, on the Chinese side than the foreign side. At the same time, uh, the, the leadership of uh, entities in China uh, will be held responsible uh, to a much lar larger extent. Uh, they will be also influencing the, the company score. So if you have, as an individual, a tax issue, uh, in, in the past that used to be your problem and totally uh, not related to the company, all of a sudden that also translates into the rating of the company's tax rating uh, and uh, hence uh, there is something where we believe uh, we have to draw a line so hence uh, this report to reach out for the uh, for the government to communicate with us yeah i'm just wondering as well there's data transfers that are required of foreign companies now under this system and i should say chinese companies uh, as well as the tax ratings and these personal data as well i'm just wondering in terms of and the partnership as well checking supply chains in terms of resources do companies have the resources needed to meet all of these new obligations I mean, it applies to the whole of uh, Chinese uh, economy. It's primarily, of course, targeted towards Chinese companies to make them more compliant. Uh, uh, and, of course, it, it adds up with a lot of pressure on us. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, the supply chain, for example, uh, now uh, we are forced more and more uh, to audit our suppliers. Uh, and, of course, that's costly. Besides, we don't know if our suppliers want that. Uh, in order, if case there's an accident or malpractice of your partner, your rating goes down. So, again, there is this interconnection connectiveness. It used to be your partner's a problem. That is your partner's problem. Now, all of a sudden, it's also your own problem. And on reporting, for example, uh, like I found out in, in the multinational, uh, it's all pulled together. And it turns out five companies were non-responsive. Turns out to be fake companies. So okay. all of a sudden, you're glued up and, mm -hmm. and tied up with companies that actually copy your products. Uh, and this has to be sorted out. So it's definitely something to watch out for. And Europe, before you go, how, how prepared are European businesses now for, for all of this? I think you mentioned that there's been a lack of, of I guess, preparation. Uh, in terms of compliance budgets, I mean, are mm. those going to have to go up? What, what can they do to kind of prepare for all this now? 
Well, I mean, European companies are, I guess, in, in general, quite compliant and, and have an idea of how to deal with the customs environment and other agencies. The problem is they have no clue about this new business credit system coming up. Uh, uh, at least in my uh, interviews with other uh, chambers, I understand that actually it's just the Germans who have figured it out somehow. So this report is written <laughs> up uh, by a German uh, analyst house, uh, Sunalytics in, in Berlin. So I hope that this reaches out to the U.S. community, it reaches out to the others in order to get ready for uh, next year. And of course, this report is a wake-up call also for our governments. Uh, as Angela Merkel is coming next uh, week, uh, uh, she got a preview already on this, this uh, paper. Uh, and because for Germany, it matters as well. Is, you know, how do the Chinese rate Chinese companies that are actually active in Germany, as well as uh, how do they treat German companies here will be of an essence. So we reach out to our own governments to say, why don't you sit down with the Chinese government and talk about this?